About the first watch of the night, I was aroused by sudden panic. Looking up, I saw the full orb of the moon shining with peculiar luster, and that very moment emerging from the waves of the sea. Right, the moon with its, its a strange glow that night. Then the thought came to me that this was the hour of silence and loneliness, when my prayers might avail. For I knew that the moon was the primal goddess of supreme sway, and that all human beings are the creatures of her providence. That not only cattle and wild beasts, but even inorganic objects are vitalized by the divine influence of her light. That all the bodies which are on earth, or in the heavens, or in the sea, increase when she waxes, and decline when she wanes. Consider this, therefore, in feeling that fate was now satiated with my endless miseries, and at last, licensed a hope of salvation, I determined to implore the august image of the risen goddess. So what does Lucius decide to do? To pray for salvation. To pray to what? The moon. This is paganism, right? This is nature religion. The mystery of the, the moon that makes the tides move, right? They can't look that up on Wikipedia. That's the way that the gods mysteriously inhabit all of nature. And so he decides to pray in the hour of his silence and loneliness. He prays to the goddess, and he first walks into the sea to purify himself. And he immerses his head seven times in the water. What's he doing? It's a water ritual. It's a, like a baptism. He purifies himself. And there he cries and looks to the heavens. And he says, O oh, queen of heaven, whether you are Ceres, Demeter, who gives all growth, or Venus, who oversees creation, regeneration, or Diana, or Persephone, by whatever name, by whatever rites, in whatever form you are, save me. Take my broken life and give me rest and peace after my suffering. Restore me to my true self, Lucius. And he prays to the goddess, and he falls asleep on the sand. Then, out of the sea, he sees a goddess rising toward him. He says, I cannot even describe it in the poverty of human language. But she says to him, Lucius, I come to you. I am the mother of nature and the mother of life, the mistress of the elements, the first child of time, the supreme divinity, the queen of heaven and hell. I am the one who is worshipped in many forms. I am Minerva. I am Venus. I am Diana. I am Demeter and Hera. And among the Egyptians, who exceed all others in ancient matters, I am called by my true name, Isis. I come to you in your calamity. I bring you salvation. Tomorrow is the day when I am worshipped. There will be a festival here to honor me as the season of seafaring begins, and my priest will lead a procession and a parade, and he will carry a bundle of roses. Approach him and eat thereof, and you will be transformed. I will save you, but you must remember me and dedicate yourself to me all the days of your life. You will be blessed and live under my guidance, and when you die, you will travel to paradise, to the Elysian fields, the realm of blessed souls, where you will adore me forever. And she finishes speaking, and she ebbs back into the sea. The next day, a beautiful sunlit day, there's a parade, a procession in worship of Isis, and the crowds pour in, the people wearing white robes and dancing and singing, a host of men and women, music, musicians and playing instruments. Images of the gods follow, and at the very last is a priest of the god Isis, the high priest of the goddess Isis, and he's carrying a bundle of roses, and he's walking down the procession, and he comes over, and he sees Lucius, and he knows that it's Lucius, and he walks over, and he hands him a rose, and he eats the rose. <laughs> and he is transformed. He becomes a man again, as all watch. The priest brings him a white robe and addresses him. Lucius, you have been brought home to your haven of peace. Your birth, your homeland, your learning achieved nothing for you. You gave in to the slavery of your body and reaped the rewards of your curiosity. You've suffered. 
You've been a slave. You've feared death. But now rejoice and follow the goddess, your savior, in steps of triumph. And Lucius joins the procession. The story tells how Lucius then goes on to become an initiate, indeed a priest of Isis and her husband Osiris. And his journey is fulfilled as he becomes a priest in the temple to the gods of Egypt in Rome. Quite a story. This deep spiritual allegory of salvation. A story of salvation by a goddess, a traditional pagan goddess, but who's in the Roman Empire becomes this goddess of salvation, who offers eternal life and who offers transformation. Who offers transformation. A transformation so radical that it's like being made from a slave into a free person, like being made from an animal into a human. 